Gurus and Jans, this is exciting. Trees are so weird. Bachar Khazuza nutshell. Ek Khazuza makes a tree video different than what Khazuza has been doing recently. He's, uh, he, Khazuza is a whole team. So Khazuza has been making like uh, a lot of your immune system videos, which is like really fun. Some like public announcement type videos, like, okay, a word that I don't want to say in YouTube. Uh, D R U, yeah, that. They've been making videos like that, which is also a public announcement thing. But trees out of black, out of the blue. Like I, I was genuinely thinking, did, is this tree related day? Is tree something special right now? Why is because I'm making this now? I guess they just, I guess they just decided I'm gonna make tree video. We are gonna make tree. I'm just gonna refer to him as a he because I hear a voice. That's just how my brain works. But yeah, I don't know much about trees. Obviously, basic things. I don't know if that's basic or not, but I'll talk about like what I know about. You'll be judge of that if that's basic or not, because sometimes I find out what I think is common basic knowledge is really not. A lot of people don't know about it. And they're like, how do you know about it? I'm like, is there no knowledge for me? I don't know. Let's go this one. Every tree you've ever seen is dead. It turns out the alive part of a tree is just a tiny paper-thin strip of cells trapped between a dead skeleton and dead outsides. Trees are some of the most extreme beings on Earth with one of the most unique strategies in nature. On top of being mostly dead stuff, they forge their body out of thin air, they mercilessly crush rocks with acid, and they have an internal negative pressure that would kill you instantly. So how do trees actually work? Let's go back to the beginning, the ancient battle for the sky. For over a billion years, the ancestors of plants only inhabited the sun-drenched surfaces of the oceans. Their bodies were thin and delicate and absorbed water straight through their surfaces, getting their energy through photosynthesis, forging sunlight, carbon dioxide and water into sugar. But about 470 million years ago, they decided to conquer a hostile alien planet, the land. like. Green rugs with ambition, these plant ancestors began clinging to the ground wherever it was wet and damp. But now, with solid ground beneath and no ability to float around, a new dimension became a place of intense warfare. Up. The higher they grew, the more sun they would get while starving their competition below. Height became a deadly weapon. The battle for the sky had begun. Until now, plants were built mostly from cellulose, which was great for shape, but strength, which limited how tall they could grow. Over dozens of millions of years of evolutionary warfare, a group of plants developed one of life's greatest breakthroughs, lignin. Lignin is a macro molecule made of ring-shaped structures. It's rigid, tough, waterproof, and incredibly hard to break down. Concrete. Yeah, lignin, uh, uh, there are uh, two types of lignin as far as I remember, and why do I know, I'm telling about why I know about this. There are two types of lignins, as far as I know. It could be more, but I think there's two. Uh, one has a sulfur in it, and other does not, right? And it was like a few percent of sulfur, depending on the tree. How do I know that? Because if you burn a wood, and it has this weird sulfuric smell, it has a sulfur in it. There's also wood that doesn't smell sulf sulfuric, which doesn't have sulfur in it. And it is like weird, like glue-type substance, which is like really hard. It also like keep the bark, bark keep the tree and wood together. It's, it's like a skeleton type of structure in it. In a world made of jelly, it filled gaps between cellulose threads, stiffening and locking everything into place. Lignin gave plants the strength to grow taller and claim the sun for themselves. But of course, now they were competing with each other, which must have been really annoying for them. Sun is like, that's cute, but I'm way too far in the sky. You can't even understand how far away I am. So, as more millions of years passed, some plants just went all in on lignin and produced more and more of it, becoming stiffer, harder, and stronger. Until one day, around 385 million years ago, they got the biological equivalent of steel reinforced concrete, wood. More on it later, but with this magic material, the first trees emerged. Almost immediately, they became the largest living beings alive, shooting up to 20 meters high into the sky, and they only got bigger from here. But this enormous size created extremely hard problems. How do you get water from the ground up to the green parts that do the actual photosynthesis? And how do you get the sugar they produce down to the cells that keep you up there? 
On the scale of a cell, a distance of a few meters is like you're working in Britain while your lunchbox is in Egypt and your drink in New York. How do you not die? So trees came up with one of the most amazing ways any organism grows and became nearly immortal by accident. A conveyor belt of death. Let's slice an ancient tree in half and get to the heart running it all, the cambium, a razor-thin, circular zone just a few stem cells wide. These stem cells grow inward and outwards, turning into two groups of specialists. The inward specialists are on a conveyor belt of death, the xylem. With each new division, it's pushing the cambium outwards, making the tree thicker the older it gets. As the xylem cells mature, their lignin production goes into overdrive, and they become hard, like a muscle slowly transforming into bone. They begin to hollow themselves out, shedding everything that once made them alive, and then they die. What's left is a corpse, a hard, empty tube. As the tree grows year after year, new corpses are layered on old corpses, forming rings of hardened dead tissue, a graveyard of trillions of plant bones. This is what we call wood. Stacked together. Yeah, I th uh, as far as I know, it's called hard, hardwood. Hardwood, I think it's called hardwood. Is that hardwood? Yeah, it's hardwood. And the, uh, the, which is the dead part, skeleton part, and outward part that is alive, it has a system to it, alive as in. So that's called sap wood. I remember sap because of Skyrim, I don't know. So it's just like, that's how my memory works. So hardwood, sap wood, yeah. Did I get that wrong? I'm pretty sure hardwood is the dead one in the center. Sap wood is outside the alive one. Together, they form a giant network of pipes that stretches the whole length of the tree. This network uses the chemical properties of water and a few other tricks to move it with incredible efficiency. Water molecules are, for a lack of a better word, sticky, like tiny magnets, and naturally cling tightly to each other. When one moves, it pulls the next along with it, like pulling on a rope. In trees, this rope starts in the roots and ends in the leaves that bathe in the warmth from the sun. Here, the heat from the sun evaporates 95% of the water that got sucked into the roots from billions of tiny pores, releasing a constant invisible mist of water molecules around the crown of the tree. This process, called transpiration in plants, creates tension on the rope of water molecules, stretching and lifting the entire column upwards all the way from the roots to the leaves. This pull is so insanely strong that it can lift water over 100 meters, which requires sucking forces equivalent to the pressure of dozens of atmospheres, as much as the crushing pressure hundreds of meters deep in the ocean. Nothing humans have ever built comes even close to this power. Even our best machines can't pull water higher than about 10 meters because the negative pressure required to pull hard enough makes it boil. Yeah. Obviously, as a civil contractor, I knew that shit, civil engineer. Okay, I didn't know about that. Like, I don't know why I didn't know about that. Really. I guess I never wondered how they got water up there. But damn, that shit is next level. When, you, when we look at our own immune system, our own like lymphatic system, right? Uh, how our brain works, how the tree works, and everything we achieved. Even with the modern tech and everything, sometimes our things feels uh, on a primitive compared to all this. Then again, when we suck water in, like pipe itself is not part of the system. It's just a dead vessel. And we pull from one specific place, which is called pump. So that's how the vacuum thing was. That's why it boils. Well, this is a whole system. From the bottom to top, it, it just works in that way. It pull, you know, pulls up water that way. That's how pipes work. So I guess we haven't made something that is like that. Because pipe is an easy thing and pump is an easy thing. Humans, uh, you, you know, a lot of time engineering goes with like uh, Occam's Razor type of mentality. Simplicity, common sense, that's how like, uh, don't core complicate thing. Usually that's how things go. So when we're innovating, like we always find ways to make it as less uh, complex as we can. But uh, I'm sure there'll be a day, I guess the technology has to be really better where we can like uniformly make a system that's controlled from everywhere. Like even pipe is a thing that moves and controls things, but that's way far in the future. But the water pipes of trees are so tiny and narrow, almost perfectly airtight, that despite the insane suction pressure inside a tree, water stays liquid and reaches the top. As the tree ages, old xylem cells eventually stop working and fill up with resins and other protective substances. Slowly, 
they turn into heartwood, a dense, chemically fortified core that's extremely resistant to decay. The core of a oh, mighty right. tree. But water is only one half of the story. The sugar produced in the sky needs to be transported to nourish cells down below. And cells from the roots to the leaves need to coordinate and exchange information about damage and growth. This is the job of the cambium stem cells that grow outwards, the phloem, the tiny living part of the tree. As the cells of the phloem grow outwards, they separate into three teams and make a brutal compromise. The first group are sieve cells and their grim fate is to become a living transport system, although living is not exactly right. As they mature, they start to destroy themselves, digest their organelles and even their nuclei that houses their genetic code. Mm. At the same time, they hollow themselves out, connecting to the sieve cells above and below them. This goes on until they're a sad shadow of living beings. A drooling, living tool without a brain or arms. There you go. This is where trees are better than humans. Human cells try to do that and some of them go rogue and we have cancer now. Yeah, trees can do this shit apparently. Unable to support themselves. Only the second group, their companion cells, keeps them alive. They connect with the crippled sieve cells via tiny channels and start maintaining them, sending over energy, instructions or repairing them if needed. Running along the entire tree, these two teams form a tiny and very thin layer of living sugar pipelines and signal cables that stretch throughout the entire body, providing food and information wherever it's needed in the tree. The third team are parenchymus. Okay, that's outside layer. So like a kid basically playfully just damages outside of the tree and there you go, you fucked up a system at certain level. Now tree is like, God damn it, now to use other pathways now cells, the silent workers of the tree that are carrying out essential labor in the background. Some are like mini pantries that store nutrients, sugars or water that the tree uses to survive the winter when it's unable to produce food. Others are like mini healers that can repair damage, while some go on the offensive and create toxins and antifungal bioweapons to kill intruders. What? On top of the phloem sits another layer of stem cells. They're producing a second conveyor belt of death moving outside. Special cells grow from this layer, and as they mature, just like the xylem cells in the center, they kill themselves for the team, turning into a hard guard wall, the bark. Just like your skin, it... I think Kazuza needs to be wary of the words Kazuza uses because of certain entity that shouldn't be named, which is the platform. Yeah, you don't ever know, like, the stupidity. Uh, I don't know which channel was it. Internet historian, right? Internet historian made a recent video uh, when, in which he uses stock footage image and like none of it was real, but YouTube is still like, oh, this is stupid. They eventually reinstated it because I guess internet historian is big enough. Like, yeah, yeah, I guess you could, uh, you know, like somebody could like, oh my God, it's internet historian. We can like most time, like if someone like me, like I have a very small channel, right? Like they will never back down, even if it's their fault. One of the, like I, I had twice I had that issue. I like probably so and like, no, 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 we can't do anything about you. You know what you do is they talk you like your children or some shit. So yeah, YouTube is a risky thing. If you're big enough, yeah, I guess they'll be afraid of the social backlash. So they'll basically backtrack. Otherwise, they just won't. Protects the tiny living layer from damage, parasites and invaders. So what is a tree? The living part of the stem is really just this extremely thin and tiny layer, a few millimeters thick, sitting on a thick mountain of cell corpses, surrounded by another layer of cell corpses. The vast majority of the biomass of a tree is dead. This is also why you really shouldn't damage the bark of trees, because while that. it seems you're only doing a little... Yeah, I just said that, like, one kid fucking it up, like, this is insane, man, I'm not gonna lie, for trees... I would not have imagined like it's so outside there way. Like I knew the center was dead, but I just assumed like, okay, very center of it dead, but it's like, I don't know, like center of 20% is dead, but like after 30% is the living thing start. I didn't know it was all the way out like that. That shit is like somebody carving tree and like doing anything. Yeah, there you go. You're screwing up the tree. That's insane. Little damage, you're actually killing the living part of the tree. But unless a tree is stopped by droughts, diseases, storms, or a human axe, this system of being mostly dead kind of makes trees potentially immortal. They don't age like we do. In principle, they could grow this way nearly forever. Which is why we still have trees around that were born when the Egyptians started building their first pyramid 5,000 years ago. 
Ready, what kills a tree is the world around it. Trees are not a real biological category, but one of the most successful ideas life has ever had, and many different species developed on their own. These plants won the battle for the sky, solved every challenge that had kept plants small and fragile, and they took over the planet in a few million years. Even today, three trillion of them cast their majestic shadows. But we've barely covered half of it. On top and below, there are the crown and the root system, one building the tree from air, another mining minerals with acid and involved in complex communications with fungi and other trees. Yeah, that's There's so awful. much more to talk about. Oh, that's so good. I remember the life uh, fungi trees, everybody talks to each other, communicate at a certain level. Like there was a big deal. Uh, scientific research was out a few years ago. That shit really like, holy shit, I didn't know that. Like that level of communication at that larger scale. Scale was insane as well. Like they, they communicate at very large scales. Like, yeah, it's boggling. I hope because that makes a video about it. Out. So we're already working on the next part. Stay tuned. Trees are truly incredible, but many of our most beautiful forests are disappearing fast and we're running out of time to protect what's left. That's why we've partnered up with Planet Wild. Yeah, that's why, okay. It was, uh, I mean, it makes sense, green video. This was like, I'm like, where the tree things are linked? But yeah, okay, global warming green. They do that video, right? It's one of the things they do. Uh, educating people on global warming, why trees are important, yeah. This is a really good video, man. I like this approach because I was genuine. Like, I just like, as soon as I saw the video, oh yeah, I don't know much about trees. I like to know about trees. So this is like, you know, like one of those topics, I've, you know, part two, I'm going to be excited for that as well as well because yeah, trees is one of those things that you learn about as a kid. You don't really truly know about details of it. It's one of the things you want to know, you need to know, right? Because it's like one of the most dominant thing on the planet and it's one of the most instrumental thing on the planet. So yeah, this is awesome. All right, well, if you like my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.